Hi friends, welcome to A to Z Learning Channel. Today we are bringing you a new video which is to share with you the latest results published by Bandhan Bank. We have always covered quarterly results uh, published by Bandhan Bank. So this quarter which was Q4 of financial year 22 also the year end quarter. So we will be able to see how well Bandhan has done in terms of the last quarter's performance as well as year on year what is the direction bank is taking in terms of its performance. So it's an important video if you are invested in Bandhan Bank or you are thinking of investing in Bandhan Bank then this is an important video for you to watch to get a good grasp of how well or bad they are performing and most importantly in this video we will also cover uh, the way forward. Way forward where we'll talk about what in our opinion the way forward for the bank could be, the way forward for a investor in Bandhan Bank could be. So without any further delay, let's commence our video. The only two things that we will request before we start our, our video, the first one is that if you think towards the end of this video, after have you, you have watched the video in full, if you think we've done a good job, then please do press the like button and provide us your comments because that's the motivation that we need to kind of keep going. And um, if you've not subscribed to our channel A to Z Learning yet, uh, please do subscribe and become part of our viewers family. So that's the marketing done. Let's start the um, uh, video in terms of uh, the content. So first of all, let's talk about the net profits. Net profits have seen a gigantic upliftment in this quarter. They are up 1,747% year on year, which is fantastic performance. But when you look at the full year performance, full year of financial year 22, compare that with the financial year 21, then the profits are down 94% for the bank. And the big reason is, if you recall, in the Q2 of uh, financial year 22, the bank had to uh, take a huge provision a uh, huge write-off and, and book a loss of I think some 3,000 crore and all that and that's sort of kind of um, uh, impacting the overall annual performance but clearly bank is on the mend they have provided for their um, uh, non-performing assets um, the big non-performing assets and uh, now it's on the mend and that's kind of validated by the latest quarterly results given their profits year on year are up 1747 percent the another thing to highlight is that uh, though on a full year basis profits are down 94 percent but when you look at the operating profits they are up 18 percent relative to last year and um, what it says is basically that operationally the bank is on the right path continue to kind of generate uh, profits uh, on a, on their on their operating activity uh, but due to high level of provisions uh, which they had to provide for um, non-performing assets, uh, their profit after tax or net profit is, is down relative to last year. So that's about net profits. Let's talk about NIM, net interest margin. This is basically the in difference between interest that they earn versus the interest that they pay to their depositors. Good story there, 8.7%, one of the strongest NIM uh, uh, is, is at Bandhan Bank. Most um, banks would operate between 3 to 5% uh, and 3 to 5% itself is considered very, very good. But Bandhan has got a NIM level of 8.7%, which is uh, up from last quarter when it was 7.8%. If you compare it with the Q4 of last year, uh, that was 6.8%. So it's up, NIM is up relative to last quarter, relative to previous year. When you look at the full year performance, again, NIM stands at 8.2% for 22 versus 7.8% for the uh, financial year 21. So overall good performance on, on NIM. CASA, which is the other key metric that uh, banks are assessed on, uh, CASA is basically the the proportion of deposit that is held in the current account and saving account um, that stands at 41.6% for the bank 
any level that is more than 35% is considered very good. Um, bank uh, has got 41.6%, so really good performance in isolation, but relative to last quarter or relative to previous year or on a full year basis, the financial year 22 has been weaker than the financial year 21. Uh, if you look at the full year number, 41.6% in 22 versus 43.4% in 21. That takes us to the next metric, which is capital adequacy ratio, uh, which is similar to what uh, they uh, produced in Q3, 20.1%, which is again a solid number. Uh, it is down from last year, um, but still 20% as a capital adequacy ratio is, is a very, very good number. Now let's talk about the non-performing assets. If you look at the gross uh, non-performing assets, that has seen a sharp decline this quarter. Um, so if you look at 6.46% is where they have closed uh, the last quarter. This was 10.81 in the previous quarter. And if you look at the uh, last year performance, it was 6.81. So even relative to last year or relative to previous quarter, bank is clearly improving the quality of its assets. Uh, the same is the story for net non-performing assets. It stands at 1.66, which was 3% in Q3 and 3.5% last year. So overall, bank is definitely doing a very good job there. So these were the kind of sort of quantitative metrics, the key metrics that uh, you as an investor in the bank need to know. Um, overall, I would say um, bank has seen its worst days uh, and from last probably one or two quarters, it's on the men, uh, but particularly the quarter in focus, Q4 uh, of the financial year 22, the bank has produced amazing results. So absolutely nothing to find fault in it. What are the other highlights to talk about? Um, management is claiming it is their best ever quarter um, in terms of performance. Their collection efficiency, which saw a dip uh, in, in the Q2 of financial year 22. Uh, it's continued to kind of improve. So that looks really good in the range of uh, 96, 97%. Um, the portfolio diversification, which is taking them to in the in the space of house loan, retail assets, and commercial bank, uh, it's also progressing well. Their uh, vision is that come uh, financial year 25, they want to have 70% of their portfolio, loan portfolio in the uh, housing, retail, or commercial bank space. Uh, they I think on track at the end of financial year 22, which was the end of this quarter, the, their kind of diversification level stands at 53%. So it's progressing nicely each quarter. Uh, so it's, it's overall very, very good performance. Now that leaves us uh, with, the, with the last but not least, the most important question is that what does it mean for you as an investor if you are already invested? or if you're thinking of investing in this. So bank clearly is on the mend, as I've said. Um, if you look at their uh, share performance since the results have been published, uh, it's shooting the lights out. Uh, in last one week itself, including today's performance, the bank stock price is already up about 10%. Uh, so it's performing really, really well. I think uh, market is giving them a big thumbs up. Um, on, on the performance in the last quarter. But my personal assessment, and in no way this is an advice to you, you need to kind of consider all the risks that, that you want to take, consult your financial advisor uh, if you have one, and then make an informed choice. But in my own humble personal opinion, um, I feel Bandhan Bank remains a weak bank. Uh, you would recall uh, the share price of Bandhan Bank used to be over 600 rupees. Even their 52-week um, uh, high uh, is not yet achieved by the bank. Um, so a lot of, lot of investors are stuck in Bandhan Bank when they bought, uh, when the share price was 400, 420 sort of level, um, because which itself was about 50% down from their, their lifetime peak level. So it's still a long way away from its, its glory days. 
It remains a weak bank. Uh, diversification is the right strategy. They do need to diversify so that they move away from some of the risky loan book that they have, which is uh, uh, which gives them high net interest margin, but at the same time is also prone for uh, very quickly becoming non-performing assets. Um, their non-performing asset, I think uh, somewhere I was reading 90% of their non-performing asset continue to pay, which is which is a good sign, uh, but uh, banks diversification is, is an important strategy. So over the next couple of years, I would hope it will be a much more stronger bank uh, with, with all the strength of the diversification in their book. But as of now, it remains a weak bank, so you do need to kind of uh, uh, categorize any investment in Bandhan Bank as one of those riskier investment. Uh, so you, when you kind of look at your own portfolio, you need to kind of make sure that you are exposed to Bandhan Bank only to the proportion which is which you are willing to kind of put in a risky asset. Um, but uh, I have got full confidence in their CEO uh, and management team. Uh, they are on the right path. They're very transparent. They're very open in communication. So I do feel that in, in few years time, it will be a much stronger bank. Um, uh, but as of now, it is on that journey. It is not there yet. Therefore, please do consider your risk uh, because this is clearly one of the weak bank, therefore a riskier investment. So I hope this quick uh, uh, video uh, where we have shared the overall performance of the Bandhan Bank and their Q4 results and also shared what we think is our outlook about its future uh, has been helpful for you. Uh, if you think we have done a good job uh, and you like the content that we have covered in this video, then please do press the like button to let us know. Give us your comment. And last but not least, if you've not subscribed to our channel A to Z Learning as yet, please do subscribe and become part of our viewers family. Thank you so much for watching our video.